Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. This is for entertainment purpose only. This is the case of the idol quadruple murders. May the four victims rest in peace. Condolence to the families. I used to always wonder where the entry point was. The police has always said it was either the sliding door or the windows. Pay attention to the window where the forensic team is at. It seems to me like there's a round circle. I wonder if the window was cut in a circle. Please let me know what you'll think. Could be possible that the entry point was the window. You can see a handle inside the window on the upper window basically, the upper glass. You can see a white handle that you can open the window. I wonder if that was used as the entry point. This is the same window, a different picture, and it seems like the forensic team are very, very busy with this area. I wonder if this was the entry point. But let's not forget many people have the code to get inside from the front of the house. This was an article on New York Post, I believe. This was at the very beginning. The grieving father of murdered University of Idaho student Kaylee Congalvis is working with his own private investigators because he fears cops in the major case are too inexperienced. Steve Congalvis raised these fears Sunday in an exclusive interview with the Post, I believe that's the New York Post, saying he was also concerned that one suspicious character had been ruled out too quickly, seemingly allowing him to flee the country without taking a DNA test. He lashed out at the lack of leads coming from cops who backtracked on claims that the killer appeared to be targeting at least one of the four roommates and have yet to even suggest a profile of the likely slasher to go on in. So this is what Kaylee's father, Steve, said in the big name. The person he's referring to, we all are aware of, is a.k.a. John Jack Schwalter. Some people call him Jack Schwalter, but on his Facebook it states his name is John Jack Schwalter. So clearly the Congalvis family wasn't satisfied with the way the case was handled at the very beginning. This is extremely important because no DNA was taken of Jack Schwalter, according to Steve. That's what he heard. It could just be a rumor because Chief Fry said he took proper police integration with the people of interest. But if Jack Schwalter fleed and drove to his parents' cabin, how would they have taken a DNA of him? Or how could they have seen if he has cuts on his hands or fingers or his body or face? Steve continued saying one of the murdered one of the murder squad officers is only twenty six. He complained, meaning he was only nineteen when the sleepy city of Moscow last had a sling in twenty fifteen. 
So they're just inexperienced. And I don't want anyone making mistakes in my child's case. Congalvis told the Post, also blasting the officers as not exactly the most tech savvy people. I talked to detectives, he said, making clear he was keeping away from internet sleuths, whom he dismissed as Hollywood SHIT, I guess. One of the private detectives I talked to has 50 years in the game, he said, of the outside help that receives words. Kind of strange that he called the internet sleuths Hollywood. S-H-I-T, when we're hearing of Steve exchanging emails with Brad from TikTok and different people. I don't believe from the beginning that it's right for any internet suits to take contact with anyone's family, the victim's families. That's why I reacted to when Zana's mother was brought by two creators on a panel and promised money and she was let down. That is what happens when we are not mindful and get too involved in certain things that are out of our boundaries. Here's the picture again on the right looks like a round circle, like the glass is split into a round circle for someone to open up the handle. Quite strange. We are trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, he said to the police investigators. The grieving dad still hopes cops will, will be heroes and prove him wrong by ultimately emerging with breakthroughs that solve the case. So this was in the beginning. I love to be wrong and we can't get this guy, he told the Post. When Gavis said he is only speaking out because of his alarm at the lack of leads, including the refusal to release an official profile of the likely slasher in the November, November 13 attack. That will give all these other girls that are walking around the community Somebody to look out for, Congavis saw the post. Don't make more victims, he warned. So this was in the beginning. This is where it gets interesting. He admitted that he also fears that a hoodie-wearing man spotted lingering near his daughter and her best friend, Madison Morgan, also 21, was ruled out too quickly for killing the pair and their two friends. Let me repeat that. He admitted that he also fears that a hoodie-wearing man spotted lingering near his daughter and her best friend, Madison Morgan, also 21, was ruled out too quickly for killing the pair and their two friends. That is quite unprofessional to say directly as a parent that he killed his daughter, Maddie, and the two friends. Why would Steve Congalvis have such strong instincts that Hoodie Guy did something to the four victims. Let's not forget, Hoodie Guy is quite experienced with k bar knives. He's a hunter. He was hunting since he was very young, since a kid, because he had two k bar knives and red liquid from an animal from hunting all over his clothes and he's quite proud to take it and you could see a unlived big animal that he slashed through inside out trigger warning that's always a, that's the reason I always look at hoodie guy all I know is hoodie guy did not order food the girls left without him he jumped into a red car a red Mazda was found in St. Deacon's Avenue, crashed, and the forensic team with the proper forensic gear, the whole jumpsuit, were inside taking pictures of the car. 
I wonder why. And the fact that Joe Vito said that he doesn't know who the guy, but they were chatting, giving each other fist, fist bumps, had, cracking a joke. Joe Vito said he is cracking jokes with the fraternity boys. So it seems like he knows them. Steve continued by saying some, some people came to us and said that he's out of the country. He didn't take a DNA test, he said. So I don't know if this was rumors or speculations going on in the very beginning. It just said that Hoodie Guy drove five and a half hours to his parents' cabin. Let's not forget he lives in Queens Road, 30 seconds or maybe 15 seconds away from 1122 Kings Road, the crime scene. Hoodie Guy follows Zana on TikTok. He follows Maddie on Instagram. And we saw Maddie telling him, you miss a F you, him and Jovito. Why wasn't Hoodie Guy's DNA taken? Steve said, so we would like the police to tell us what his alibi was, he said, saying he would be able to move on if they could confirm it was solid. That is reasonable. Where was Hoodie Guy? After he went to pa his parents' cabin, he could have buried the knife there. He could have had motive. The girls were kind of rude to him. For whatever reason, in the grub truck. They didn't want to be around him. And there were rumors from people in the college that were in the corner club. Two girls from the sororities said in the beginning on the Facebook or on social media that he got kicked out, not only from his fraternity Delta Tau, he got kicked out from the corner club that day for harassing the girls, allegedly. I'll let you all read this. So I really wonder if the entry point was this window here. It could have been. So this is who Steve is talking about. John Jack Walter. He was kicked out of his fraternity Delta Tau Delt. He's AKA Hoodie Guy. His DNA allegedly wasn't taken, according to Steve. He lives in Queens Road, right next to the girls. He's experienced with K-bar knives. He's skilled, he's skilled in hunting. He had, a, he had one used K-bar knife, trigger warning on his Facebook. He's taking it all down. He has parents that are surgeons and doctors. He has two brothers that are doctors. And he went off to his parents' cabin. It was later said he went to Africa, which I don't believe, but he did drive to his parents' cabin. So how would the police take a DNA of him? This was his Facebook, which he took down, I believe. What is strange is that Jack Showalter, Jack John Showalter, knows Bethany Funk and Dylan Mortison, the surviving roommates, all went to Boise High School. So these are people who know each other, which is kind of interesting. I've always pointed that out. When you have three people who know each other, it could be an advantage for them. Somebody could have left the door open for him to come in. He seemed to be very upset when he left the grub truck. And I've never said that BK is innocent or guilty. But my question is, did BK did, did the quadruples by himself? Or did he have help? By Jack D, allegedly? Or by Jack Schwalter, allegedly? Or David Lodge? I'm putting out the names there because these names have been there 
from day one. David Lord tried to fight with thee, so we know about that. And Zana, Jack Schwalter, who the guy was the last person seen with the girls. Jovita was one of the last people. So I believe they're extremely important, especially if, phone, if the interviews were done over the phone and no DNA was taken. There was three unidentified male DNAs. Whose DNAs was that? And how come the lab has instead provided it, according to what we knew last in December? On the final note, I'd like to show you something that has been said here. And this has to do with Jack Showalter, Jack D, all of the people that were people of interest. Number two on your list. Uh, I guess number two for me would be the way that law enforcement kind of cleared everything right away. So, you know, they, they, 911 was called 1158, and then they, they put out an alert, the University of Idaho put out an alert at just after one in the afternoon, and then they issued a shelter in place at just after 3 p.m. fast, and it just seemed like law enforcement knew something as soon as they got there. It, 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 well, I, I, if that's true, that is just mind numbing. It's just mind numbing if that, if that is true. Um, I was going to comment on what you said about the cleared people so fast, the two jacks. And some right. of these people that they cleared right away, they did it on a phone call. That's not police work. Right. That's not how police work. That... So you'll heard from the attorney Andrew D. Mayers. I'm using this on fair use purpose. Please like, share and subscribe to him. I've been watching him over here. He's quite good with many cases on talk about talk about it in the legal perspective. So all the people of interest were cleared. Most of them were cleared over the phone. And that makes sense because Jack Schwalter wasn't even there. If he drove five and a half hours to Boise, Idaho, how could the police even see if he had any cuts or anything on his fingers? That's strange. They didn't take a DNA, I guess. Please like, share, and subscribe. May the correct justice be served for the victims.